Welcome to Cyber Monday. I'm Christian Redshaw, and joining me as always is my co-host, Dominic Vogel. So Dominic, who do we have in the hot seat today? Uh, today we have uh, Charisse Lapointe. Uh, she's a sales director with Terra Nova Security, and, and boy, she's just a bundle of energy. So uh, I think we're going to be talking, talking on some really cool topics with her. Um, namely, uh, one about how data breaches are just becoming the daily norm and how that's sort of becoming integrated in terms of overall awareness. You know, the people component of that is so crucial. And we talk about sort of the people pieces of how to build a cybersecurity awareness program. So I think we're in for a real fun time with her. Yeah, I know you could do everything from a technology perspective and put all kinds of investment and time in there. Mm -hmm. But if your people are opening up the door for cyber criminals, mm -hmm. it's all for nothing. <laughs> So I'm going to jump into this seat. We're going to invite Charisse in, and we're going to get the show started. Charisse, thank you so much for taking time to, to chat with us today. And um, I think what's really cool about uh, the conversation we're going to have is about that human element of security, that it's often overlooked. And often when you'll hear about cybersecurity, people will think, oh, IT handles that, or a managed service provider handles that. How important is the human element? I mean, the human element is, is vital. Um, obviously, everybody has to be involved for this to be effective. Um, you know, if you've got just certain departments that are, you know, responding quickly, then you're not going to have, a, you know, a well or a good program overall. So, uh, it, you know, it's, a, it's important to really have um, individuals that can actually be the most vulnerable um, in, your, in your security practices to really understand, um, you know, what they should be doing. Absolutely. And, and, you know, when we look at sort of, I guess, data breach trends, you know, the vast majority of them can be mapped back to some sort of user interaction, which is required. It's not necessarily a technology that's failed. It's usually that, that human level that's, that's failed. Um, for, you know, so the, the business leaders that, that are, are watching the, the show, what's that other sort of level up we can talk about from that conversation about how important, again, that, that human level is um, and that it's not an outsourced risk, that it's, it's still incumbent on the, on the people and being able to tie that back into awareness platforms. Absolutely. So, you know, a lot of times we'll find that, that IT really puts a focus on technology. Um, in most cases, IT professionals are, you know, very technologically yes. savvy, so this <laughs> is where they focus a lot of their attention. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of, uh, you know, budget that can be put into this time and attention um, to really make sure that the processes are there uh, from a technology side. But if you've got individuals that aren't trained properly and are essentially opening the door, all those efforts are really for nothing. So, you know, it's important to make sure that obviously the technology side is important and having those types of protections in place. Yeah. But additionally, you know, you really need to focus on, on the human element. Um, so that's, you know, probably key. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and maybe last question on, on this thread before we maybe go in a different direction. Um, is, is awareness, like sort of that whole notion of human awareness and about the security uh, perspective, is that something which all businesses should worry about? Like let's say you're a five-person shop or a 5,000-person shop. Does awareness hold as, as being an important element of a security program? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, small business is targeted just like large business. Um, the difference is really just budget in a lot of cases, you know, and, and obviously, you know, mad power of how many people you can devote to making sure that, that your organization is protected. Um, but absolutely, you know, there's going to be the same risk for a five-person organization as, you know, a larger organization. So it's key to make sure that everybody understands these practices and applies them as well, not just understanding, but also, you know, using them um, from day to day as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I imagine that the companies that you're dealing with, they care enough about cybersecurity to do something about it to train their people. They care about a, a culture of security and a culture of managing their risk properly. Mm -hmm. What would you say is a healthy uh, cybersecurity culture? What does, that, what does that look like by the time you're done with your clients or by the time you got them where they need to be? So, you know, culture obviously, you know, speaks about everybody. And that, as I mentioned before, is, is really key, making sure that everybody is sort of going the same direction, has the same understanding. Um, and that that's something that's promoted throughout the organization to make sure that it really is instilled in the culture of something that they do, um, you know, on a daily basis. It, it doesn't differ from day to day. They really always apply these practices. Um, so, you know, having everybody focused uh, on one goal is, is key. Yeah. Um, and in order to do that, of course, you're going to have to have plan, a planning in pardon me, a plan in place, um, you know, where you're able to get everybody of the same level of understanding, knowledge, education, all that in order to, uh, to have them go in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but before you start with them, uh, what are some of the things that you've seen in terms of how not to go about cybersecurity <laughs> awareness? What, what is 
a, a broken uh, situation look like? So there, there's probably quite a few um, examples <laughs> I could use here. Um, but a lot of times, and, and it's not really the fault of the organization or the individual that's that's trying to, um, you know, to protect the organization. A lot of times it's resources are really just not knowing what to do. So, you know, I, I see a lot of people that will do like an email blast, um, you know, without really any, again, any plan or, you know, they'll just send something out when there's a risk that's emerged. And we find that that's not really very effective. Effective, you really have to approach this from multiple angles and make sure that you know you're you're doing testing, also training, um, and that there's a full program and plan in place. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, email blasts is probably not um, effective enough. I have other organizations that again they they try to do maybe like a one hour training in person. There's no real way to monitor what's happened from that or if people were paying attention right. if they actually, you know, took that information and, and applied it. Mm -hmm. um, so although in-person has, you know, its place and it's certainly valuable, it's not the only thing that you should be doing. So there really needs to be uh, multiple um, angles and multiple focuses in order to, uh, to have a full plan. Yeah, that's, and that's really interesting, you know, with the whole notion of awareness being able to, I think, reinforce what we want to be uh, seeing as positive behaviors mm -hmm. rather than sort of admonishing negative behaviors. Um, and you mentioned, you know, having this as being a multifaceted approach, and you hinted at uh, fishing assessments there, mm -hmm. sort of to be sort of the, the check and balance on the actual awareness. Um, often we'll, we'll hear that as, as well, that, well, you know, we do the once a year training, we're good, you know, all the <laughs> staff are aware, but there's no sort of check on that. So how important in, in your mind is doing something like a fishing assessment to sort of gauge the effectiveness? Yeah, so fishing, I mean, it, it's something, again, it's it's a piece of a larger plan. Yeah. Um, I see fishing in a lot of ways as an evaluation yeah. uh, technique. So you, yeah. you have to have that to see sort of, you know, there's a few reasons you could you could send a fishing simulation out initially. It could be related to, you know, establishing a baseline or understanding where you are currently um, opposed to where you need to be. So you can use it for sort of, you know, baseline, or pardon me, establishing of a baseline. Um, but in addition to that, it can be used as testing as well. Um, and if it's applied properly, it would be coupled with education. So in the case that somebody um, fails a phishing simulation, they may be referred to additional training or perhaps a feedback page or a learning page so that they could actually understand, you know, maybe where they went wrong so that they can see an improvement in the, in the next, uh, next simulation. And again, just launching one per year isn't really <laughs> going to be that effective. I mean, it will give you a good perspective on, you know, where you are. But certainly, you know, you want to be able to, to show that there's a good business case for yeah. these um, initiatives in the first place. So, yeah. um, you know, more than one and, and usually we anywhere from about two to four is probably a minimum um, that I would recommend anyway. Right. So, I mean, from what you're seeing with, with your customers, is there sort of that shift from sort of that compliance view of security awareness as being a checkbox to being something that's a little more, um, you, you mentioned there, more <laughs> continuously integrated into the sort of the workflow of everyday business. So if someone does fall for a phishing assessment, that's the opportunity to be trained sort of on the spot of what they did, why that was wrong, and how they can learn from that. Are you seeing that more of a, of a trend, that, that more and more organizations are buying into that and moving away from the compliance mind uh, mindset to something that's a little more um, continuous? I would say definitely. Um, a few years ago, it was really, you know, trying to, encourage or convince people that this was something they needed in the first place and that was the main argument that had to be made is, is why you need this um, nowadays it's not it's not that at all it's, it's people <laughs> come and they understand that they need this everything from you know enterprise to, to small business I think for the most part understand that this is important I mean on a daily basis you can you know you turn on any channel and you're gonna see that there was a breach so it's becoming you know something that people see yeah. um, and it's becoming more of you know the day-to-day -day. so um, I also find that IT budgets are increasing as well. So that's usually that's when they're putting when they're putting money towards something. It's usually because there's a re you know there's um, a clear reason that they have to have that. Uh, so definitely, I'm seeing a shift in in that uh, in that trend. So Sharice, you've done a really good job of explaining why uh, awareness is important and getting the whole workforce on board with that. Um, let's slow it down a little bit and talk more from an analytical perspective. And feel free to go into all the steps. Let's give some practical advice to business owners that are watching today. What steps do you take clients through to set up a, a, a good awareness training program? So in my mind, the, the first step is always, you know, where are we right now in comparison to where you want to be? So, you know, step one is, is figuring out, you know, what are we trying to accomplish? Mm -hmm. You know, what are, what are the click rates, for example? Um, so there's a variety of different things that you want to understand in that area. 
Um, and again, as I mentioned, you can do that in a few different ways. You could send out a survey um, to your staff and see where their current um, their current knowledge level sits. So baseline. Uh, yeah. So baseline is in like there's a few different ways that you can do baseline. <laughs> so fishing is one. Uh, obviously, to set up a, a baseline assessment, um, surveys, a quiz, or an evaluation. And ideally, if you're going to use the method of a quiz or an evaluation, you would want to give them um, an evaluation that's the same at the at the end of the training. Um, so that you can see where there's been an improvement. So step one is understanding where you are, um, and that will help you to actually position the rest of um, of your steps or, or your plan on how to accomplish them. Um, yeah, and I, and I would imagine there you're looking for context, you're looking for their business objectives, getting a feel for their absolutely. some of their challenges and the, and their culture. Absolutely, and where where are your risks? So that, you know, there's obviously many topics under the <laughs> the security awareness. Sure. Uh, a heading. So you have to figure out, you know, where do I start with this? You know, you could start with something very basic like passwords, which, you know, in a lot of cases, IT professionals will think, oh, that's common knowledge. <laughs> you know, they understand that. I don't need to train on that. Um, you'd probably be surprised. Um, you know, so it, it's it's important to make sure that people get that education, um, you know, in order to uh, to understand which, you know, what the basics are to begin with. Um, so the other thing that's probably key uh, is understanding how it's going to affect them. So, you know, people have a, a much more of an interest in things if there's a, a personal level to it. So, um, you know, launching modules like perhaps traveling securely, um, you know, um, uh, mobile devices, things right. that they, you know, they may use on a day to day that are going to resonate with life. them. Yeah. On their personal life is really how you're going to, to help them to, um, to develop an interest in this as well. Right. And, and when we're talking about the training as well, you know, you mentioned, you know, there's, there's sort of that, that general level of awareness that you know, everyone in the organization needs to have. How do you sort of make it resonate with the different groups? Because like you mentioned earlier, you know, like IT may gloss over about, you know, password security. Absolutely. They're like, oh, you know, what? that's that's easy. We know how to do that. How do you sort of target it? So like from the IT group, from the rank and file to even the C-suite, um, how, how do you work on that messaging? I, I mean, you can't train everybody with the same, you know, same content. Right. Um, certainly somebody who's in IT, you know, an administrator or um, a developer is going to have a different level of knowledge than the average end user. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, again, really goes into the planning of understanding, you know, what's going to make sense to them. Because if you try to put, you know, a C-suite employee through, you know, a basic training, you know, they're, they're going to be a little bit resistant to that. You have to respect the fact that they probably have a bit more knowledge in this area um, and understand that it has to still be interesting and, and um, there has to be new information for them as well, for them to have an interest in, in completing it. Um, the other thing is is really personalizing. Yeah. So you want to make sure that not only your you know your content is personalized, um, but also your plan is personalized. So to each department, and as I mentioned before, understanding you know what topics um, are of your biggest your biggest concern. Right. Um, for each department, and that could could be different. You know, for for um, different parts of the organization. And, and, and I guess it, the, you know this would probably uh, differ depending on the organization size and what mm -hmm. resources they have, but. Um, Again, it'll probably differ from if it's small or large company, but do you see different facets or you know, units within the organization taking on the security awareness banner? Like, does it work well if it's run by IT? Does it work better if it's <laughs> learning and development or HR? Again, it's probably a case by case basis, but maybe what are some items to keep an eye on? Because often, at least our experience has been that it's usually IT's responsibility. It, right. Is that the best bucket for it to fall in? I mean, IT professionals are yeah. <laughs> being cautious yeah. on my response. Um, IT professionals are not communications experts. Right, no. You know, it, it's not something that they were. You know, it's not in their in their it's job not in their function. Job not, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, they do sort of have to to wear a couple hats. And in a lot of cases, it will be handed directly to IT, and they're you know expected to sort of be able to launch this full campaign. Um, but if you want to really see an effective campaign, you really want to get everybody involved. So, you know, from an early stage, you want to include HR. Make sure that they have their input. Their say certainly management has to be really on board with this it has to be a top-down effort um, and you really want everybody to be able to come together in order to to create a company culture of security awareness mm -hmm. yeah no that, that, that's really interesting and and from the um uh, i know there's a there's differences in terms of cultures as well i mean when you when you probably more so for global organizations more so than maybe uh, localized organizations um how do you keep in sort of thinking about those cultural differences as well? Because there's some people who learn better by just reading. Some will learn better through something that's visual uh, or more media driven. Uh, I've, I know we've heard things about gamification within mm -hmm. security awareness. Uh, again, you mentioned it earlier on. You can't just take one strategy. You have to look Absolutely. big picture. What are some maybe longer term trends in the awareness field? 
So um, from the perspective of, of making sure that everybody has an interest in actually completing the training, you know, they're more than just communicating information. There has to be sort of a psychological aspect, um, yeah. aspect to this. Exactly. So we need to understand that there are different types of learners out there. Some are more auditory, others are more visual, you know, so you have to sort of have all these elements um, that go together. Certainly interactivity is key. Um, you know, just hitting play on a PowerPoint and expecting people to pay attention <laughs> to that is not going to work. Um, you know, and that is, again, probably a, an example of a broken system we were talking about earlier. Um, but it has to be something that, you know, that they can really, um, you know, focus on and go through that isn't... Uh, you know, isn't necessarily, um, it has a personal uh, attachment to them as well. Right. Yeah, I think, you know, I can see in, in your process that part of uh, understanding if it works is a, a change in behavior. So you have to find a way to, to measure that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an important thing to, to note for our, our listeners. But then there's also the idea that cyber threats are evolving. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep your training up to date. So you can't just record, you know, uh, <laughs> cybersecurity training in 2014 and go, okay, <laughs> we're good. Yeah. And, and just run the tape for 10 years, right? You it's have true. to, you have to keep it current. I mean, it, it's a very fast changing industry. Um, and that can be the challenge for an organization that wants to do, you know, their own internal program. Um, you know, we, we've averaged that it takes about 30 individuals uh, working full time to keep something like that updated. Um, in a lot of cases, that's just not feasible for most organizations. They'd rather sure. put that that attention in other places. Um, you know, so you really want to make sure that the the training is um, specific and relevant um, to those to those departments as well. Yeah, with examples maybe of some things that are happening in current events that exactly. could so, affect them. In yeah, you industry. need content that could be created quickly and launched to to uh, match what's going on with, with current trends. Mm -hmm. um, so in a lot of cases, uh, right now, what, what we're doing is actually launching about a module a month. Okay. Those modules are specific to something that's gone on within, uh, you know, in the news, for example, mm -hmm. um, so that people can really relate to that. It's always saw that on the news, and then there's a training on, on how to avoid that. Um, so because it's, you know, sort of top of mind, um, that will help to, to instill that, that lesson. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I wanted brush. to mention is Dominic and I talk about this with our clients and talk about this on past videos, tone from the top. So whether it's the C-suite, whether it's if you have a board of directors, mm -hmm. how important is that in working with your clients to establish, you know, a good example by the leadership? Definitely very important. And that can be a challenge. Again, in a lot of cases, you know, we have... Um, you know, management is, is a lot of times focused on their specific job and IT yeah. is something that they sort of consider as an afterthought yeah. or I'll deal with that later. That's somebody <laughs> else's job. You know, I, I, I understand that. So I shouldn't have to, you know, apply these practices. And a lot of times they'll rely on the technology side to protect them. How do you stop this? From happening? <laughs> <laughs> you keep saying this. <laughs> well, I mean, that it, it's a challenge. Um, there has to be an interest for them. And I find that getting them involved in the beginning and getting them on board uh, with, you know, whatever the initiatives that, that you're trying to launch, um, getting their approval and getting their input on it is going to help. Um, if you just sort of, you know, present something to them without giving them any input on it, it's kind of, okay, yeah, sure, that's great. You did that, I'll deal with it. And it, that sort of push aside thing. Um, but again, if it's something that they have some ownership on, um, you know, you could also, we call them cybersecurity ambassadors. Right. So if you can sort of help to, to have certain individuals take ownership of these campaigns, help to promote it for you and communicate with the rest of the organization, um, that's going to be helpful in the first case. And, and certainly if you can get managers on board to do that, um, that's going to be, you know, probably where you're, you're going to see your, uh, your best success. Yeah, and I think even too in ideal cases, if you are actually building rewards for employees for good behavior, mm -hmm. I don't know if you touch on that at all, but I think that's such a such a key thing for a mature organization. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I've got you know it depends on the organization what you're able to do, but I've yeah. have some clients, um, for example, that you know if they have passed a, a consecutive number of fishing simulations, they may get like a half a day off or a better parking spot or right. you know a, a catered lunch of some sort. Um, these are little things in the big scheme of things, but it really does create buzz. It gets people talking. It's incentive. It does, and it's incentive to be a little bit more vigilant when something comes in rather than just, oh, it's IT's responsibility to make sure that I don't get hacked. Yeah. Um, so that, you know, can help to motivate them. And from the gamification perspective, which you brought up before, 
um, is another option of sort of allotting a point system um, to having them over and above just answering questions correctly, but actually completing their training. Um, so that sort of uh, angle for gamification, I find, is um, is becoming very popular. Yeah, which is such a positive reinforcement. I think a lot of companies approach it from a negative standpoint of maybe scapegoating yeah. certain people or scapegoating certain departments like yeah. like <laughs> IT or, yeah. or, or whoever it may be. Um, how, how do you overcome kind of that negativity and... and make that comfort level for people to say, you know, you're not going to get fired if you click on something <laughs> bad. Actually, we want an open communication exactly. where you can just come, have this yeah. open forum and report it so that we can learn together and become more resilient. Absolutely. And, and that probably really ties into communication as well. Mm -hmm. So making sure that they understand that, you know, this isn't a punitive thing. What we're right. trying to do is make sure that you you're understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're not getting fired for this. Right. Well, hopefully not anyway yeah. in most, <laughs> most cases. Um, but the idea is, is again, for them to, to understand it, you know, that they're not going to be punished for this so much mm -hmm. as so that they can be, you know, that you can help them mm -hmm. um, and give them the, the direction or the education that exactly. they need in order to be a stronger, uh, stronger asset to the organization. Yeah, you've got the protection. You've got the leadership mm -hmm. setting the tone from the top, and they're actually doing a really good thing for the employees by putting this in place, yeah. replacing that uh, system of punishment. Absolutely, and again, that, that still ties into culture as well, and we've, we've mentioned culture a few times, but um, again, it, it, a lot of times if organizations are of a, a more positive reinforcement, you're going to see that, you know, go down into the, the IT uh, efforts as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think at the end of the day, um, it's just about, um, you know, changing it from that negative standpoint to becoming something that's positive, mm -hmm. and I think people are sitting there doing their jobs on a daily basis and they don't want to be harassed <laughs> as a role <laughs> with, with, with cybersecurity so discussions yeah. and spend time getting pulled off this. It seems like just a, a sunk cost. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you, we're, we're t talking about the biggest risk to an organization, their biggest vulnerability is the people. Mm -hmm. And if you actually are shoring that up, yeah. Measurable risk reduction. Absolutely, yeah. and that's what we see Companies. as well. With uh, you know, again, with, with uh, phishing simulations, the idea is that we should see a marked improvement um, from one to the other. And you know, again, this doesn't happen overnight. This is with a, a variety of, of different efforts. Mm -hmm. um, but that's ideally what you should see is an improvement in things like click rate. Um, you know, them opening uh, malicious emails, or in this case, of course, it would be faked malicious emails. <laughs> but um, you know, that sort of sort of idea. That's awesome, yeah. uh, Sharice. That was an absolute awesome convo. So we, we, we're very appreciative of you taking the time to, to chat with us today. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, that was an amazing episode. Not only did Cherise outline the how-to steps, but also who should be in charge and what bucket cybersecurity should fall in. Is it the IT bucket? And if so, are IT people really the ones trained to communicate as professional communicators yeah you know and, and you know Sharice is just such an uh, awesome person to uh, talk with you know I mean that was a legit awesome convo and um, you know the, the energy she brought to it and really talking again about how this isn't just something which IT or the cybersecurity takes on and you know, to get true cultural awareness within an organization that's multifaceted that is all over that is HR that's marketing that's communications IT cybersecurity right across the board uh, so I think that was a really awesome point that, that she brought up yeah, you know, at the end of the day, it's measurable risk reduction and it's change in behavior. That's mm -hmm. the outcome of taking care of the people component. Yes. Thanks for watching. You can view our other podcasts on conversationsthatmatter.tv and we'll see you next Monday. Mm -hmm.